You know, as a result of acting for the Northern Land Council in that case, they started to brief me in other cases. I did the Catherine Gorge land claim. I did another ca another claim for the Jowan mob in the land contiguous to the ca Catherine Gorge National Park. I did other cases for Aboriginal interests. I, I worked for them on and off over about a 10-year period. I went out bush with them. I camped out with them. I got to know a lot of the black fellas. One of my clients' name was King George. <laughs> and, um, you know, they were real, they were real fair income Aussies. I mean, they were the true blue indigenous Australians and, and it was a privilege to act for them, actually. Did you develop a healthy respect for the workings of tribal law? Well, the trouble is that there's been so much interaction between most Aboriginals and um, the white man and all the excesses of the white man, like drinking and using salt in copious quantities on your food and eating white bread instead of brown and having a shocking diet and all that, that everything's been weakened. And a lot of the younger ones don't really have much regard, as far as I could tell, for tribal law, although they did respect their elders. And um, it's been very difficult for Northern Territory Aboriginals. You don't, Aborigines, I should say. You don't think there's any way that... Um, you, you said before you spent a lot of time with them and yeah. got to know them well and yeah. see how they went about matters. And I know there's an interesting little story you told um, at a bar dinner about how they referred to you as an old man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. a little bit indignant. Well, there are some people there older than you. But, uh, no, no, but no. on the other hand, they were saying that you were there to help them. And yeah. uh, I just wondered if in that process you, in a sense... Were there elements of their approach to justice or law issues that you felt we could borrow from, for example? Look, I can say quite honestly that I didn't become sufficiently familiar with their tribal customs and practices um, to make a comment about it. I, I became familiar with what the particular claimants were saying were their important sites and why they were important and importance to them, um, because that was part of the case. But... I wouldn't hold myself out as having any real expertise in the matter about which you've asked me. But I've got to say that I'm a bit pessimistic about the future of Aborigines in this country. Yes, that is, that is a sad um, comment indeed. Nevertheless, though, the work you did for the Northern Land Council, that was an important prelude to Mabo. Well, I, I actually had a minor role in Mabo. <coughs> what, what actually happened was that Ron Caston, who argued Mabo, a terrific um, barrister, very fine human being, and died far too young. Um, Ron was acting for the Central Land Council and I was acting for the Northern Land Council. We used to swap notes a lot about different cases and different issues, and I used to talk to Ron quite a bit about Mabo. Um, but it was his case. I mean, uh, I, I was involved in the follow-up case to for one of the, I was briefed by an Aboriginal group from Western Australia to, as an intervener in the um, case. Sorry, getting old, I'm forgetting names. But it, it's, it's, it was important law, and I think important socially, the Mabo decision. I mean, the suggestion that Australia was terra nullius, that in other words, it didn't have any people living here, in the face of all the evidence to the contrary, is, it took the High Court to correct that historical um, view. If you could, would you have chosen to maybe continue to broaden your practice in that area if, if things had been different? Well, or? I worked for them for 10 years. It's funny, you know, I, I used to charge them about a quarter of the fee I would charge, if I charged at all. In Melbourne, they used to think I was outrageously expensive, even at that level. And I didn't give up working them for any financial reason, but I mean, I got older and uh, it's tough working in Darwin. I mean, it's you don't pick uh, the right time of the year to go up there. It's hot, going out bush, living off the land, camping out and all that. I found it very physically demanding. And I think I got to the stage in my life that I felt that I was sort of... I'd, I'd done enough physically. I think by the time I... Uh, I stopped working for them, I probably was well into my 60s. Yeah. Do you feel there's enough members of the bar now carrying on in that 
spirit in the way you've approached things? I, I don't really know, but I can say this, that at the time I was doing work for Aboriginal interests, there were a lot of Victorian barristers. It's to the credit of this bar. And a lot of guys became judges subsequently because they had the right attitude. Frank Vincent, John Coldry, Jeff Eames, um, oh, endless number, Dyson Hall Lacey, um, David Parsons, Ross Howey. I mean, these were top people. What do you think was peculiar to the culture of the bar? Do you think that engendered the spirit in so many of these people? I don't think it was so peculiar to the culture of the bar. I think it was just that these were decent people. And I mean, there are a lot of people who act for good causes. One of the things that I found, <clears throat> and I'm not going to name any names, is there are a lot of people who are colloquially referred to as do-gooders and they're often third-raters. And I think when I got up there, there was a lot of mediocre legal advice being given to the Northern Land Council. And without being modest, when Ron and I started working for the two land councils, I think the quality of the advice they got was a lot better. And in the Alice Springs, where a lot of these guys I've named were working um, in criminal stuff, the quality of the d defence of Aboriginals in the in Alice Springs area improved out of sight. Um, I, I, I think it's important that people from the Victorian Bar keep this up. Has the quality of the advice remained at this high standard? I don't know. I, mean, I simply don't know. But you would hope it has? Yeah. If the right people are doing it, it would have.